All right, welcome everyone. My name is Zuri Jones. I'm the Advising and Outreach Manager in the Education Abroad Office. Uh, I'm joined today by my colleague, Erica, um, who works with our external program advising as well. Um, so today we're going to talk, oops, we've got someone else coming in. Okay, so um, today we are going to talk about different opportunities to study abroad in Africa. So we are going to, oops, get my, there we go. We're going to um, talk about external programs um, because our external programs, I'm sorry, our Africa programs are external. Um, we're going to look at how to find a program on the website. And then we'll look at the different study abroad opportunities and locations in Africa. After that, we'll look at how to actually start an application. We'll look at the course approval process, paying for study abroad, and then finally, I'll uh, leave some time for questions at the end. Um, but if you do have any questions during the presentation, feel free to use the hand raise option and I will, uh, unmute you. All right, looks like we got a few more people. Okay. All right, so let's jump right in. So what is an external study abroad program? Um, an external program is um, a study abroad program that's administered by another college or university or a study abroad company or organization. Um, our external programs have locations on nearly every continent, so there's a lot of different options. Um, if for whatever reason you're looking at our um, temple campuses or exchange programs and you don't see any locations or options that you like, external programs are a great option. Um, you can study at an international learning center. Um, which would be um, a center that's owned by the study abroad company or university um, where uh, American students go to have their courses and then they usually do some kind of immersive experience or um, you can study directly at a university. We have some options today where you can actually enroll um, in like University of Ghana, University of Cape Town. Um, so there's a lot of different options. Um, the external program providers also offer their own uh, program advisors. So while of course you can work with Erica and our team um, to coordinate your plans on our end, you also have access to a study abroad advisor um, with that company or organization. Housing options for external programs are similar to the housing um, options of our other programs. You can stay in a residence hall. It could be an apartment. Um, there are some homestay options. So the um, specific program will have different housing options, but they look pretty similar to what Temple offers as well. So again, um, our external programs uh, have locations on every continent. If you are interested in studying abroad this summer or this fall, you do have a bit more time. Uh, the deadline is April 1st for the, sum, um, for the summer and for the fall semesters. Um, and then if you're looking at spring 2025, you have until October 1st to apply. If you're looking for an external program on our website, you're going to go to studyabroad.temple.edu and under this programs tab, right here in the corner, you'll see external programs around the world. And if you click that link, it'll bring you to a landing page that has a little bit of more information about what an external program is. Um, and then there is a link that actually shows you the external program approval process, basically letting you know the steps to make sure that your credits actually transfer to your degree program. And then we also have a list of all the different companies and universities that we partner with um, and, and whose programs that we approve. All right, so that's a little background on external programs. Now we'll look at some of the different opportunities and locations of programs that are currently available. 
So we'll start in Botswana. Um, there are a few CIEE programs. Um, CIEE is an external study abroad company, and they offer summer semester, um, summer and semester programs and internships. Um, so in Botswana, CIEE has a wildlife and ecology um, conservation summer program. There's also a great option for any public health majors. Um, there's a community public health uh, summer or semester program. And then if you just need to take some general courses or courses, um, maybe like upper level major courses or minor courses, you can actually enroll directly in the University of Botswana and have access to their for full course catalog of arts and science courses. Next, we have uh, one program in Cameroon. Um, this program is run by SIT, which in, is another study abroad company. Um, and they're offering a semester program that they run in partnership with Dickinson College. Um, so this program is open to all students, any major. Um, and it's really uh, a focus on the development issues in Cameroon, really looking at the culture and politics and economy of the country. Um, so this can be great for uh, liberal arts, maybe uh, um, an elective or something like that. Um, and again, this is a semester long program in Cameroon. There's also options in Ghana that are offered through CIEE and SIT. There's the Summon, Summer Ghanaian Studies um, Summer Course through CIEE, where you enroll in the University of Ghana and have access to their summer courses. Um, their summer course offerings do vary from the semester offerings. So there's also the um, semester program at University of Ghana, where you have access to their full arts and sciences course catalogs. There's also um, a more focused program offered by SIT, and that's the Globalization um, Cultural Legacies and the Afro Chic semester. This is great for um, anyone who's studying anthropology or just wants to have some kind of cultural immersion in Ghana specifically. Um, it's a really great program that SIT runs. And usually for SIT programs, you actually uh, have a homestay. So you're actually living with a family um, when you're visiting Ghana. Next, we have some options in Kenya. Uh, these are run by our partners, um, SFS or School for Field Studies, um, and again, SIT. Uh, this is really great for our uh, any health majors or STEM majors. There's the Global Health and Human Rights Semester Program offered by SIT. Um, if you're looking more at um, environmental science, um, there's the Endangered Species Semester Program offered through SFS. Um, and again, more of the um, eco ecologically focused programs, um, we have the Giraffe Ecology and Confirmation Summer Program and Elephants of the Savannah um, Summer Program as well. Uh, so again, this is a really great option um, for any STEM majors. There are also options in Madagascar. Um, again, we have some great public health offerings. There's the Traditional Medicine and Healthcare Systems Summer Program, where you look at the history of Madagascar and the different the biodiversity and how it's used in medicinal practices in that culture. Um, there's also the Biodiversity and Natural Resource Management Semester Program, we explore rainforests and different, um, <clears throat> excuse me, um, different environmental challenges in Madagascar, um, which is an island off the coast of Africa. So it's a very unique set of um, uh, uh, biodiversity in that location. There's also a very intensive program uh, offered in Malawi. Um, so this program is also run by SIT. It's called Agriculture, Sustainability, and Justice. And really this looks at food systems, global food systems. So it's actually four locations for this program. Um, you start off in the American South. So you start in the US 
And then you travel to Ecuador and then to Malawi and then to Spain. So you actually physically follow the um, uh, food system, global food systems across the world. Um, and it is a little intensive, like I said, um, it does offer honors credits if there's any honor students here today. Um, but if this is something that you're interested in, social justice, um, health justice, this is a great program to get a deeper look at how all of these different systems interact with each other. There's also a lot of courses offered in Morocco. Um, our partners CIEE, IES, and SIT all run programs. These are all study abroad companies. Um, and there are um, a, there is an honors climate change semester program that's offered through SIT. Um, we also have some more um, the migration and transnational identity and the human rights, social justice and cultural transformation programs also offered by SIT. So these are really um, cultural immersion programs. Um, they're really great for, again, anyone studying um, human sciences, uh, anthropology, things like that. There's also language immersion options in Morocco. So if you're learning or want to learn Arabic, um, language. There is a summer program offered by CIEE. There's also summer Moroccan studies, which brings in more of the cultural aspect of Morocco. And then if you want to actually enroll in a university in Morocco, um, IES works with uh, University Mohammed V, um, which is located in Rabat. So you do actually have access to that uh, university's course catalog. Um, there's also a language and culture semester program offered through CIEE. Next, we'll take a look at Mar Rwanda. Um, Rw our programs in Rwanda are run by SIT. Um, there is a summer program for peace and conflict studies, um, which looks at the root causes of genocide. You take a closer look at the Rwandan genocide, which happened in the 90s. Um, and really look at how the culture has changed since then and different reconciliation and sustainable development opportunities as well. <clears throat> There's also a semester program, excuse me. And that's the post-genocide restoration and peace building semester program, which again, takes an in-depth look at the 1994 genocide in Rwanda, um, and really looks at aspects of peace, conflict resolution, uh, unity, and re um, reconciliation. So this could be great for any criminal justice majors or anyone that is um, looking, again, at anthropological studies. There's also a lot of programs in South Africa. This is probably one of the most popular destinations on the African continent. Um, as you can see, three of our providers operate programs there, CIEE, IES, and SIT. Um, this is a great option for any STEM majors. Again, there's an engineering and science program offered through IES. Um, any public health or STEM majors, there's a health, culture, and development program offered through IES. Um, there's also some summer programs offered in Cape Town. Uh, where you can learn about community development and social justice. Um, and then you also can take courses at University of Cape Town through IES or CIEE, um, where again, you have access to the full course catalog of that university, and you can study uh, arts and science courses there as well. There's also a lot of internships available through our South Africa programs. Um, and this is not an exhaustive list of all the options there. Again, this is one of the most popular locations. Um, so you have a greater chance of finding uh, courses or programs related to your major. And then we have uh, our programs in Tanzania. Uh, these are run by SFS and SIT, and these are more um, uh, ecologically and biodiversity focused. Um, so again, you have some wildlife conservation and political ecology program um, with SIT. 
Um, there's the Coastal Ecology and Natural Resource Management Program as well, Wildlife Studies, Carnivores of the African Plains. So this is more oriented towards, again, biodiversity and sustainability, um, but it is a great opportunity to really get firsthand experience on how um, to live sustainably within an environment. And then finally, we have our program in Tunisia. Um, and this program is unique in that it visits um, Tunisia and Italy and looks at the connection between those two countries. Um, so this is our politics and religious integration in the Mediterranean semester program, where you look at the, the interplay of politics uh, and mass migration, which is a huge issue nowadays, um, and, and how these things interact um, uh, uh, throughout the Mediterranean. Um, there's also an op opportunity to do some language immersion um, with either Arabic or French language, which are both spoken in Tunisia. All right, so those were some of our program options um, that are currently available. And we'll look at some next steps and how to get started if you're interested. So first, if you haven't already, um, please attend Foundations of Study Abroad. This is our required information session for all students who plan to study abroad. It gives you all the basic information of um, how to apply for scholarships, um, different um, program options beyond these that we've discussed today. So it's a really great place to start. If you've already attended Foundations, you can meet with your academic advisor and start talking about which courses um, can actually apply towards your degree program. Um, and then once you've confirmed with your academic advisor, you can start your application um, on the external programs website and you will apply on our website as well. So on our side, you're just basically doing a request to study abroad. Um, it's kind of a, a formal request to do an external program, and then you'll apply to that program directly, um, and they actually give you the uh, admissions decision. And then also, I highly recommend looking at scholarship op options as early as you can. Um, it's a little, it's definitely late for scholarships if you're planning on going abroad for the summer, um, but there are still some opportunities for the fall. And um, so these are just some things that you can discuss with your academic advisor, things that you want to keep in mind as you're planning for your program. Um, so you'll want to look at your semester by semester plan um, to see when it makes sense for you to study abroad. You want to also be aware of any requirements for your courses. Some courses are specifically required to be taken on main campus. So make sure that whichever courses you want to take, you can actually have transfer credits for that course because um, all of our external program credits come in as transfer credits. Um, and then you'll also want to look at what types of courses you can take abroad, whether that's your major courses, minor courses. Um, a lot of people just do their electives and gen eds when they're abroad. Um, so you'll see what makes the most sense for your particular degree program. You'll also want to be avail uh, aware of any policies around transfer credits. Again, if you're doing an external or exchange program, your credits will come in as transfer credits, um, which usually doesn't make a difference unless your program has a limit on how many credits you can transfer into your program. So based on all of this information uh, that you'll discuss with your academic advisor, you'll figure out the best time to study abroad and which courses you wanna take while you're abroad. I also recommend looking at the external program approval process. Again, this is on our website under the programs tab. Um, and this just has the step-by-step -step information from beginning to end of how to apply for an external program, starting with foundations. So this is a great place to refer to um, if you're in the process of picking and applying to a program and you're not sure what to do next, definitely refer to this page. It'll tell you all the steps that you need to take. And then when you're ready to apply, you're going to go to the page of the college or company that you're going to study abroad with, and you'll complete this request to study abroad. 
I also recommend applying for a passport as early as possible if you haven't already. Um, we do offer a passport scholarship for first year Temple students. Um, so if you um, are, um, if you are a currently a first year student, you have until I believe the end of May to um, get your passport and the scholarship, we actually reimburse you for the cost of your um, passport. So definitely, you know, you'll want to go apply for your passport, pay for it, and then provide us with the receipt and we reimburse the cost of your passport. All right, lastly, we'll take a look at finances, how you can afford um, to study abroad. Um, so financial aid actually does apply to external programs as well as temple programs. So whether you're doing a semester program or summer program, your state, federal, and temple financial aid will definitely apply towards the total. Keep in mind that when you're doing an external program, you're not... Um, you're not paying that program fee and temple tuition, you're just paying the program fee. Um, I will say that summer uh, financial aid is not as widely available because there's not as many courses offered. So sometimes it can be more cost effective to study abroad during the semester when you have access to your financial aid. The tuition rates for external programs are going to be on that company or college's website. So we do not determine the cost of those programs. You'll be able to find that on the company's website itself. And it's usually broken down something like this, where you have the actual um, tuition fees and the billable cost here, and then the estimated cost for personal expenses. And then um, a lot a lot, if not most, um, or all of our external programs offer their own scholarships in addition to the scholarships you can get from Temple. So again, this can offset the cost and make it um, sometimes less expensive than a Temple program, sometimes more expensive. Again, it depends on where you're going and what the program actually entails. So there are several different types of scholarships that can be used towards external programs. Um, our office does offer education abroad uh, scholarships for external programs. And then the external companies like CIEE, IAS, all the acronyms, they actually offer their own scholarships, um, which can offset the cost. And then we have a database of outside scholarships available on our website as well. Um, and I recommend doing research on um, iGrad or Scholarship Universe. Scholarship Universe is a really great place to start when you're looking for study abroad scholarships or any types of scholarships. Um, so you have access to these um, search engines through the TU portal under the cost and aid section. And finally, uh, stay in touch with our office. You can follow us on uh, Temple U Abroad on Instagram and TikTok. Um, there's also uh, blogs of other students who have studied abroad that are available on our blog site as well. All right, I can take any questions. You can feel free to unmute yourself or drop them in the chat. Okay, well, if no one has any questions, thank you so much for coming today. I hope I'll see you at Foundations, or if you have additional questions, you can stop by our office. Thank you.